Hello, everyone, and welcome to governance call number 21, or rather 20 and a half, because we got interrupted halfway through last time. So that's also why we've changed the, the settings. So you need to register before you can come in. And the email you receive with the direct link to the call should work every time. So that's the link you'll be using once you register. Now, for the agenda today, we're gonna to start with a brief governance update, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about the token revenue model, and we're gonna introduce a new active contributor to our DAO. And then there's a proposal for updating transaction fees for pools, and then there is a change in the facilitator of the credit group that we'll also hear about. So that's what we plan to go through today. So let's start with the governance updates. Since our last call, there has been two proposals that have ended and passed, and they are CP68, which was the proposal to simplify the POP, the pool onboarding process, so which has come into effect now. And then there was CP73, which was runtime upgrade 1023. And the main content of that runtime upgrade was to fully enable liquidity pools, which is going to allow investors on other blockchains to invest in centrifuge pools natively. So that feature has been enabled now on our chain. Then there is a proposal going on right now for to extend the CFG token utility, and that is the request for comment for updating the transaction fees, which is also on the agenda that you will hear about a little bit later. So last month, as I said, we got interrupted halfway through. So the topics we didn't have time to go through, we are going to start with today. And so we will start with an update on the token revenue model from um, Cassidy, if she's here. Did she join already? Yes, I'm here. Perfect. Hey, Cassidy. Hey, everyone. Um, let's see. I wonder if it's possible for me to, maybe I'll just copy and paste uh, what I've written here instead of showing you a slide. Um, let's see. That's very terrible formatting for now, but um, basically wanted to be able to let everybody know that we are in the progress of working on a model for the token um, and just wanted to give you some context um, that should hopefully go live on the forum uh, by the end of this week or maybe early next week. Um, and the main purpose of this model is really to be able to, I think, really give the DAO tools um, to be able to understand and um, and vote and reason about different proposals that come to the DAO, specifically with respect to CFG and the token and anything that would affect um, either from like protocol fees, transaction fees, to grants that come in, um, to reward rates uh, for investors and in pools, any of these things that are affecting CFG. Hopefully this model can be a tool for the DAO to start um, understanding a little bit better uh, those types of proposals that come in. And so really um, what I've you know dropped here in the chat is being able to have this mental model that we're sharing um, as one DAO of how we really talk about the token and how we make decisions about it. Um, so the goal of this is really gonna be to be able to visualize um, the token supply, but also things like um, treasury growth, the grants program, revenue, like I mentioned, and then how all of these different things tie into each other. Um, and I think one of the cool things, hopefully that it can help to visualize is how long-term we can start to see a slowdown in uh, the CFG supply growth and eventually even have a burn rate that's implemented. And I think the way that we see that is by seeing how things like protocol revenue growing over time make it so that we don't really need to incentivize as much with the CFG um, supply increase the way that we see now. Um, and so hopefully this model can be a, a good tool to really be able to see that 
and then also understand as a DAO what the key drivers are for growing the DAO and things that we need to be focused on uh, in terms of proposals that come in um, and things that we can start to um, focus on and support as a DAO and support specifically with CFG potentially. Um, yeah, so that's just a little bit of um, a teaser, I guess, on what you can expect. Um, this will be presented as a, um, a Google Sheet. And so ideally have a lot of different things that you can play around with um, and just be able to get your hands dirty and start understanding um, the token supply a bit, a little bit more. Um, are there any questions for me? Um, I would say the people that are supporting on this as well um, have been J in terms of understanding the transaction fees for different pools. Um, Yvonne, as well as uh, Dan Sparkle, who just joined us. Um, and so we're all trying to put together, yeah, the best model for the DAO um, that's easy to understand. Thank you, Cassidy. Sounds like an important proposal to see how everything is connected. So are there any questions uh, regarding what Cassidy just, just talked about? No questions, but I just, I've already commented on it myself. Um, I think this is the right step in terms of just building, because the one question I often get asked about when I share my love for Centrifuge is token utility. Like, what does it do? What, you know, and beyond like being just a general governance nerd as we all are. And, and I think this is one of the powerful things for it, but I like how, you know, depending on what you're trying to do on the network, it was prohibitively more expensive with regard to how much CFG you would have to pay to like initiate a new pool or what have you. So I feel like anything that further bolsters the use case for the token itself is is a step in the right direction. And so I just wanted to give you a shout out for, for the work that you guys are doing and putting that out there. Thank you so much, Ryan. Keep sharing your love for Centrifuge. We love when you do that. So... If there are no more questions uh, regarding this, there's gonna, Cassidy said it was like end of this week or next week, it's gonna be posted on the forum and you'll be able to read more about it in details and comment on it there as well. So I think this is a good transition to the next point on the uh, agenda then, which is the introduction of a new active contributor that Cassidy just mentioned, Dan Sparkle. So um, Dan, if you are here with us, can you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you're going to be doing? Hi, thanks, Ohan. Um, can is my sound quality okay? It's great. Okay. Hello, folks. I'm Dan. I'll keep it brief. Um, most recently, um, the stuff I've been doing in DeFi, which is relevant to the um, the, the meat on the bones of um, the treasury role within centrifuges um, through DeFi summer, um, I was kind of quite deeply involved with a uh, hundred million plus um, um, treasury, but I was doing it pseudonymously. So I've, I've yet to uh, decide if I want to tightly couple my experience there with the work here. Um, in addition to the stuff here, I'm also um, working on a um, more kind of cryptography um, heavy um, project called Entropy, which um, has yet to release anything um, into the wider ecosystem. So um, that's um, a, sh a shop based out of um, New York. Prior to um, the DeFi stuff, um, my background's in kind of advanced data analytics, um, and I've been in and around the blockchain space since around 2013. Um, and uh, working at the intersection of um, real world finance as it intersects with um, on-chain stuff. So I've been a long time admirer of Centrifuge as kind of one of the few examples of where um, blockchain is uh, touching the real world. So I'm, I'm heaps excited to be here um, with you folks. Um, the role itself is um, Cassidy put up a um, post about this the the new treasury for um, which is occurring um, CFG and stables from 
um, the pool. So um, my job ostensibly is to kind of come in and help to build treasury fr uh, frameworks around uh, reporting um, uh, and to um, help to socialize kind of how we might think about um, this new on-chain um, asset collectively amongst the DAO. Um, so the I guess one of the, the reasons I've been brought in is kind of having a, a deep um, understanding and having worked in many DAOs whilst also having some chops in TradFi because it's a bit of a, a new emergent space that we're in, which um, uh, is uh, new ground, as it were. So you'll see me getting a bit more um, active within the next six weeks as we're communicating some of the um, tools and frameworks that we're kind of putting out. Um, hit me up in DM if you've got any more questions. Um, and I look forward to working with more of you. Great introduction. Thank you, Dan, and, and welcome as well. We are happy to have you and pick your brain and use your experience to, to move forward here. So thank you. All right. Um, let's move on to the next point on the agenda then. And that is the, on, the ongoing proposal that is on the forum, the request for comment about updating transaction fields, transaction fees for pools. So Ivan, if you would be so kind, can you tell us a little bit about what that is about and why it's important? Yeah, thank you, Arhan. This proposal is time to introduce an additional fee on centrifuge chain for pools and for liquidity pools. This introduction and deployment of centrifuge pool and liquidity pools on centrifuge chain as a fee haven't been reviewed or changed. So this proposal introduced additional component that could be modified via governance uh, because uh, the price of CVG could be changed. So if the price of CVG will be changed, the fee could be also changed via governance. Uh, important note that this transactions fee will not impact the simple standard transaction fee on centrifuge chain and will touch only a specific transaction for centrifuge pools. And all this fee will go to the centrifuge treasury. The list of proposals that transaction fee was published on the forum. I just posted the link in chat. Uh, even if somebody considering that this transaction fee is at too high. The biggest fee the, is only paid during the deployment of pool and another and all other uh, action like minting, updating, and closing uh, of a POG. This is just a small portion of CFG. Uh, we believe that introduction and the additional component to the transaction fee will be paid in CFG token, will add additional token utility, like Ryan already talked uh, today. So now CFG token will be much more required, and mm, we can see the growth of centrifuge strategy when more pool will be deployed on centrifuge chain. Mm -hmm. Uh, I see the beneficial for the SUR. The SUR will pay lower fee in comparison with Ethereum. And another beneficial uh, part is that this fee will, will be directed di directly to CFG treasury instead of Ethereum. So CFG DAO will be able to decide what to do with this fee and how to invest them. And this proposal aims to make centrifuge protocol self-sustainable over the time. If anyone have any question, feel free to ask. Anyone have the chance to look at the RFC on the forum and the specific amounts for the different types of fees? then it would be great to actually get some input from any, some of the issuers, those that are issuers today on uh, Tim Lake to hear what they think about uh, about this. I don't know if any of them are in the call today because we might be a little bit fewer people today than usual, but 
any uh, of the issuers with us? Or in general, what do people think about this uh, this proposal? So as Ivan said, like there are gonna be specific fees for transactions for pools on Centrifuge. And those fees are going to go directly into our treasury. And it's going to be lower cost than what it currently is on Thin Lake on Ethereum. So, so yeah, that's uh, another problem about the transaction fee on Sunday which is that we are not depending on a gateway price and Ethereum price so the sewer can easily program their spending and mm, the transaction fee will be added to token revenue model so everyone can see how they can impact revenue model in the long term and how they can increase the revenue treasury. There is a question from uh, Sepi asking, like, how uh, how did you come up with those numbers for the fees that uh, is mentioned in the proposal? Can you talk a little bit about how you came to those? Uh, yeah, uh, so the numbers was helped and proposed by, by Jay, but uh, mm, uh, we played a little bit around on Google spreadsheet and see and we saw how this number impacted and how they increased the Centrifuge Treasury. For the deployment, I think that we, the Centrifuge have some costs that they should bear. So this is why the price is 500 USD in CFG pay. But this is just in proposal, so these numbers can be changed. So if you will see that the, 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 this fee is too high or too low, Centrifuge DAO can propose to change them via governance. So this is just for special. Um, I've got a I've got a question. Is there yeah. um is there a precedent in other DAOs for these numbers specifically? Like, is there is there a reference point in some other organizations that we can use? I don't think so. I talked it with one of his sewer on Tin Lake, and he says that he's paying from one up to 2K a month. We spend on Ethereum the fee. With this fee, it's always depending on the type of pools that will be deployed on Centrifuge chain and which asset will be treated on these pools and how many repayments will be during the month or over the year. But definitely, this fee will be much lower than on Tin Lake. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, you mentioned that you cannot, you don't see uh, any, what was, uh, can you clarify what you meant by that? Sorry, can you repeat, please? So that was uh, to Jay. He wrote something in the chat, just uh, wanted some clarification, but it's okay if, uh, Uh, the question yeah. from Sepi, yeah, the this fee could be changing because CFG is related, but definitely we can find maybe sometime another way that paying in USDC. But for now, this proposal is just paying in CFG. Yeah, and I was just going to chime in and say this, and this I'm sorry about commenting on the wrong thing. This was the actual RFC I meant to comment on previously. Um, I, I think Bella has a good point. Like, I wonder if it would be better to take whatever the matching issuance cost is, right? Whatever it may be in ETH, you know, and attach it to like a, a USD peg. And then because now with the coming integration of Asset Hub on Polkadot, it should be really easy to swap between CFG and native, say, USDC or USDT. So I, I wonder, because that way you, you're removing the volatility from the equation with regardless of whatever the CFG token price is, and you could easily swap your CFG for that. Um, just food for thought, of course, right? Like this is just the discussion phase, but that would kind of eliminate the volatility. And then we could have like a very fixed price where people aren't war wondering like, what is it going to cost to deploy this pool right now? You know, if it's just like a flat price and then people are, whatever the CFG is, it, you know, hopefully as it appreciates in price, they're using less of the CFG token to actually like pay to get into the pool. And then you don't have to like have 
constantly tweak the CFG numbers as it climbs in value over time to then compensate for it being listed in CFG, if that makes sense. So I, I think Bella's got a good idea here. That makes sense. I think right now it's uh, it's very difficult to implement on chain because it relies on oracles and we don't have great oracles at the moment on Polkadot. So I think this is something that we'd love to implement in the future. Um, very similar to other CFG transaction fees, you know, we've had to change those in the past as well through governance um, because they were set much higher originally. And then I think Ash, it was actually you that had proposed one of those uh, when the CFG price rose and those transaction fees didn't make sense anymore um, just because of you know, the value of CFG. So this is something that we're gonna have to monitor for now. And then hopefully once we do actually have better oracles uh, and we can implement this in substrate in a way that, um, yeah, can maybe tie these transaction fees to uh, USD um, and then paid in CFG. I think that could make sense, um, but hopefully somewhere down the line. I'd also point out that, um, yeah, when Jay was going through this, it was really um, in terms of reasoning about the fees, thinking about what is the actual work that is entailed with each of these transactions that an issuer is performing um, and trying to price these transaction fees according to you know, deploying a pool that's a much heavier lift than some of these other smaller transactions. And so trying to make these um, fair individually, so each specific fee really being tied to what the effort is on chain that's being put in, um, but also in total combined, making sure that these fees are coming in lower than what these issuers would be paying um, on Ethereum, but also in other real-world asset protocols. Um, and also hopefully lower than what they're paying now within TradFi. So the the total fee that an issuer would be paying um, on Centrifuge uh, still uh, should be coming in lower than what they're paying in TradFi, what they're paying for other reward asset protocols. So that was part of the goal of this proposal as well, is making sure that um, the total cost for an issuer is still competitive. Um, to every to other options that are out there. Um, and so I think that's something that we also in, are including in this model that we'll be sharing uh, on the forum soon. And so something that can you can play around with as well and hopefully inform this transaction fee proposal too. Answering the question about comparing this fee with other protocols, this is a nice question, but it's not easy to answer. I think we talked with Bill Kahneman about this and because these fees are not public, this is really hard to find them. So this is probably another proof for centrifuge that they will be public and transparent for everyone. Yeah, and I, I can add it on that. I, I did talk with Maple about us launching a pool of their protocol and it was impossible to get a number out of them. Um, they, they basically said that like the fees are specific to the type of pool or the type of um, issuer that they're doing. So depending on the amount of diligence they had to do, depending on the type of work or the legal set would impact the fee. And I asked like three different ways trying to get an exact fee for you guys so I could share that. But um, they're like, oh, it just depends. That's kind of the answer they they kept giving me. So um, I wasn't able to get an exact number, but I, I was able to figure out that, that the fee structure is different for each issuer that they have, basically. Thank you. Sefi, you commented in the chat about it. Do you want to say it out there loud? You're up for it. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm not, not familiar from with uh, with English anyway, but yeah, I I, I think that uh, it's a pretty critical um, uh, proposal, and uh, it should be monitored, uh, as Cassidy said. And but uh, I have faith to, to the team that uh, the numbers are okay, and uh, there has been some uh, you know uh, researching about this. But I also agree with. Um, funky about uh, having some kind of oracles in the end. I, 
I heard from Lucas that uh, you guys uh, have a partnership with uh, Chronicle Labs, and uh, that's cool, I guess. But yeah, I think the the fees are pretty important for the sustainability of the project and the uh, the long term vision of the of the project. Thanks for that, Sepi. All right. Are there any more uh, questions? I was just going to add, I, I think these numbers are fair as well. Like we're not an issuer yet, but um, in terms of the cost, none of this is like super frightening for us. I have uh, like one question and it might seem a little bit premature given the proposal hasn't passed yet, but like when would it be reasonable to reconsider these fees again? And here I'm thinking specifically of like token price because it's going to affect the fees directly. So when can we expect like these numbers to be revised? Like when does the CFG token need to reach a specific price or have you thought about that? I think that we can monitor the price and we can actually change the price of this fee with uh, on chain volume maybe once a month so depend always of the volatility of the price so if the price of CFG will change only for ten percent so I don't think that makes sense to launch a new on chain voting but probably once a month this could be done easily. I think it really depends on how much volatility we're seeing. And then hopefully soon, like you all mentioned, um, there will be Oracle solutions that could work much better than they do today. Um, we are working with Chainlink uh, on Ethereum, uh, with Chronicle Labs as well. Um, so there are Oracle providers out there. Um, but nothing that's working on chain uh, in Substrate in an easy way for something like this. Um, it's just a little bit more complex to implement. Um, it is something that we're working on though um, and uh, building in substrate. And so I think that's some, some, um, something we can see hopefully soon, uh, but until we get there, yeah, just monitoring the price. Um, obviously issuers would probably be the first to um, to want to propose a, a, a new price if CFG prices is, uh, is going up. So I'm sure that we'll have enough people in the DAO that are paying attention. Right. Yeah, my, my answer was going to be kind of like jokingly whenever the issuers start complaining. <laughs> yeah, it's another good indicator. Any other inputs on this? on the transaction fees, on the proposal for the transaction fees, sorry. This proposal is still in RFC fast, so everyone can comment on, on the forum and we can consider any suggestion. Yeah, go forward, sorry. Yeah, I just want to say we were thinking of, uh, so the reward structure for issuers uh, when they uh, mint an asset on chain changing uh we were thinking of changing that so perhaps around the same time that we would think about changing fees for them we would change about uh, change the reward structure as well yeah Ivan, can you uh, say a little bit about what is the what is what are the next steps for this uh, for this proposal? You mentioned it's still in the RFC phase. Yeah, the next step uh, submitting this proposal on GitHub and after on Open Square snapshot voting, and after protocol engineering group should give an update when they can this uh, this proposal can, can be implemented. Once we'll be implemented, we'll be deployed with runtime upgrade, I guess. Great. Thank you, Ivan. Or is there any timeline for when uh, we can expect this to go to an open square snapshot? 
probably the end of this week. Um, maybe the next one depends if I will receive any comment on the forum. Right, makes sense. I think you can also, I mean, there's been a lot of great feedback in this call as well. Um, I don't know if any of it like will be added to the RFC, but yeah, I think it's it's a really good example of like doing governance well, actually getting feedback and then people building on each other's ideas in this call. So I think that it's really heartening to see this. So thanks everyone. So just to sum up all those amounts in the proposal, they will go directly on cut to the treasury but all the transaction fees that are currently paid, they go like 80% to the treasury, right, Ivan? Uh, yes, correct. And 20% will go to polluters, to our own blocks. Right. All right. If uh, anyone wants to go and comment on it uh, before it moves on to an open square snapshot, now would be a good time. Well, not right now, but like shortly. And uh, we will announce it as soon as it has been submitted to GitHub and is final and moved on to an open square snapshot so you can all vote with the, your CFG in the proposal. And just to remind you guys, like voting in an open square snapshot is off-chain voting, which means there's no lockup of tokens. You just use the balance that you have in your wallet to vote with, and that's it. So, and it doesn't cost anything. Just to make you guys aware of that. All right, thank you, Cassidy, and thank you, Ivan, for presenting this, and thank you for the proposal. And let's await the next steps. Okay, I'll take it, there are no more, nothing more to add to this topic. So we can move on to the next point and the last planned point on the agenda which is the change of the facilitator in the Centrifuge Credit Group. And as most of you know, the Centrifuge Credit Group plays and have played an important role in terms of uh, reviewing pools, launching. And so Harvey, will you uh, give a short introduction of yourself and what you have in plans for the Centrifuge Credit Group as a new facilitator? Let me just switch my audio and video on, I guess. Um, sure. For those of you who have not seen me before, most of you probably have. Can you guys see me okay? We see you and hear you. Brilliant. Um, hi, guys. Uh, so my name is Harvey, and uh, I run a uh, research and some media consultancy. Um, I've been focusing on tokenization. Um, since 2020 and centrifuge was my red pill moment. Um, and recently, I guess life just come full circle. Uh, for those of you who may be, uh, who have seen this yet, um, go on uh, fixing.finance, I believe that's a website, and uh, partic participating in, uh, in the fun activity there. And you can also read a in-depth um, RWA tokenization uh, research report uh, covering the competitive landscape, um, as well as the challenges and opportunities. And uh, since I'm, I'm introducing myself right now as a, you know, as a facilitator for the credit group, um, there are a couple of things that I just leads on from the opportunities um, uncovered in that report, um, which is that, you know, Centrifuge, the credit group um, plays an important role in its uh, networks of you know expert, uh, experts with deep credit knowledge in the space, and uh, we should absolutely make sure that these good sort of like experiences and you know uh, perspectives are being put to good use. So my one of my aims there um, will be to streamline and ensure smooth functioning um, of the credit group pop review. And this will provide a few very important things. A, I think that's visibility for the proposal, the deal. And B, um, as an independent body, um, what does someone with decades of track by credit experience see uh, in terms of you know, uh, opportunities and risks and give an independent review? And as leading on from that, I think it is also important to make sure that 
uh, the credit group is not just on the radar on the forum, but it is the nerve center for everything that is on chain credit. And what I mean by that is, whenever if you are an issuer in the ecosystem and you're thinking about which tokenization platform you want to go for, you know, to you want to utilize, and for your own issuance, um. I want to leverage the centrifuge credit group's expertise and um, the output from that to make that into a strategic value add for any issuers. Uh, because as as anybody who have participated in the other side of tokenization, which is the investor side of things, it is very important to understand um, you know topics, assets that are not exactly everyday conversation. Um, so you know. By making the credit group into the nerve center for on-chain sort of like credit organization, um, I hope to uh, lead the group into a uh, into a uh, I guess the upward growth trajectory for for the protocol the community as well as the group. Thank you, Harvey. Um, real real quick. I've uh, I've read the report Harvey did most recently, and it's incredible. I've shared it with several people who also found it very, very good. So I cannot wait to see more of your work. And for those of you who um who do not have maybe two hours to read a thirty page you know research report, please feel free to uh, either follow me on LinkedIn. Um, you can find the link I believe in the report. Um, otherwise, just reach out to me. I write daily in very short form post. Um, I also write uh, a, a newsletter that goes out weekly. And here's the most, I guess, something interesting for you guys, right? In the future, um, I will be collaborating with the credit group members to put out asset specific um, educational content. So look out for that. Excellent, Ari. Thanks for sharing that. Are there any questions? Uh to Harvey at this point. All right. Well, what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing is that more experts are joining and starting to contribute to our DAO and we are slowly growing, making a lot of good proposals to increase token utility and to improve our protocol. So. You're doing all the right things and moving in the right direction. And I think we have some very exciting times ahead of us. So, and I'm very happy to be with all of you guys and part of it. So, yeah. Kate? I have a question. Yeah, Harvey, um, great intro. Um, it's great to have you uh, and congrats on the report. Wonderful work and so happy to have you involved with the credit group. On top of um, yeah, pushing content, which you're obviously very good at, what else do you hope to do or plan to do to kind of make the credit group this nerve center? Can you share any of your ideas with us? Yeah, I think um, uh, one of the things that's very important is to really sort of like understand where everybody's expertise and motivation lies, you know, um, and you know, and really be sort of like matching, you know, maybe let's say the DOC, the pipeline with the right person, that itself would massively sort of like, uh, you know, speed up um, and increase the efficiency of the whole process, right? Um, and also I think, you know, getting the members perhaps more involved in participating in something that they're not used to, like maybe a, a convert, like this sort of course, where if you're in a investment bank, I, I, I don't think you are very familiar with the DAO concept, but uh, maybe this would be a, a, a bridge for them to participate more in, in, the, in the community. Yeah, nice one. Thank you for sharing. Sounds like some other good plans as well. Anything else? All right. Well, there's nothing more on the uh, on the agenda plan. So, does anyone have any other questions in general, like related to governance, of course? 
that they want to ask now? No questions on the meaning of life, right, Ohan? Exactly. I will emphasize on related to governance. I mean, governance is related to the meaning of life. Oh, that's very deep. <laughs> that's very deep. All right. Any, uh, any questions on the meaning of life? I'm just grateful we weren't like overrun by craziness this month. <laughs> yes, I wanted to uh, share that as well. You took my lines, Ryan, but uh, thank you. But that's exactly it. It was uh, a successful first call after we changed the settings and because there were some things we were a little uncertain about, but it seems like it's working. And we just, I think within the next two months, we're gonna get all the others joining us again. So. It was expected that we wouldn't be as many this time as usual, but it was great quality and that's what counts. So since there are no questions about the meaning of life or governance in general, I um, think we can end this call earlier today. I just want to share like one little thing that I wanted to do actually in the beginning in the governance update, which is that we can expect that a formal proposal will be made like latest this year for uh, a transition to open gov. Now, there has a, a discussion post has been created and there has been a lot of contributions already, but there are some technical details we still need to work out before we can be very specific with how we want, how we propose our setup to be um, going forward. So there are still a lot of details, but the DAO can expect a proposal like November, December for a migration to open up. So that's all I wanted to share. Does anyone else, last chance, anything you want to share or ask? Well, in that case, thank you everyone for coming and joining our job governance call number 20 and a half. And I'll see you guys next month, same place, same time. You can use the same link as I mentioned earlier to join all the subsequent governance calls. So have a nice evening and well met next time. Thanks, Ohan. Great work. Thank you guys. Thanks, Javi and Dan and Ivan and Cassidy as well. Great, great call. Thanks, everybody. See ya. Thanks, man. Bye bye.